Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Job. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out some daily MCQs. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, we are going to cover the thoracic spine. We will be learning about the structure of the thoracic vertebra. We will be dividing it into body, the facet, transverse process, spinous process and we will be also talking about the disc. In future videos, we will go on to the kinematics and kinetics of this joint. Okay. So starting with the body, the anterior posterior that is the AP diameter is equal to the transverse diameter. So if you see the vertebra also over here. The AP, the distance from the anterior to posterior and transverse is kind of the same, right? And this gives the stability to the vertebra. Apart from this, the body is wedge shaped, which produces the kyphosis at the thoracic spine. So if you see over here, this part is thicker compared to the end part, right? If you can see over here, you can see it properly. It is wedge shaped. This distance is way more than the distance over here anteriorly. So this forms the wedge shape. And if you keep stacking more vertebras on top of each other like this, it will kind of form a kyphosis, right? Kyphotic spine, which is seen in the thoracic region. Apart from this, there is also the costocapitular demifacet, which articulates with your ribs. Correct. Then going to the next part, that is the transverse process. Now transverse process is very thick, if you can see over here, and it ends with costotubercular articulation okay so this has articulation with again the costo is what costo is your ribs right and tubercle is tubercle of the ribs so the thick end of the transverse process articulates with the tubercle of the ribs okay and this articulation is oval in uh, shape oval facet is present at the transverse process so till now we covered the body which is wedge shaped with costocapitular demifacets over here demifacets okay which is half facet and then the transverse process which has costotubercular articulation which articulates with the tubercle tubercle of the ribs okay now going ahead there are the other normal facets that are seen in all the vertebras right so these facets are oriented in the frontal plane and it starts slowly transitioning at around t10 to t11 and where does it transition? It starts transitioning to sagittal plane slowly. Okay. So if you see, this is the normal thoracic vertebra. And if you can see the facets are oriented in the frontal plane, right? This is the anterior side, posterior side, and this is the frontal plane. And if you can see the facets, they are oriented in the frontal plane. So, so if I take one vertebra and place the other thoracic vertebra on right on top of it, okay, like this, if you can see, this frontal orientation fits right over here and the lateral flexion movement will be nicely seen in the thoracic region. I have discussed about the orientation of facets and how it influences the movement at a specific region of spine in my Instagram videos too. So you can check those out. So basically this has frontal in orientation. So that's why lateral flexion movement will be the most significant movement seen. So the superior facet over here, so let me take one vertebra first. So this is the superior facet, right? Because this is inferiorly facing, correct? This is the inferiorly facing, okay, like this. So these are the two superior facets, which are oriented posteriorly. So this is your anterior side and posterior side. So it is facing posteriorly. It is facing slightly superiorly. Over here, you can't really appreciate, but it is slightly facing superiorly and slight lateral also. But mostly it is in the frontal plane. That is something you need to remember. Whereas the inferior facet. So I'll just turn it around. So these are the two inferior facets. If you can see. Let me just mark them with the clay. So these will be your two inferior facets. Okay. So these are the inferior facets. And top would be the superior facets over here. One over here. And the other one over here so superior so if you turn around these inferior facets 
where are they facing this is the anterior side this is the posterior side so if i turn around it is facing anteriorly so anteriorly they are slightly facing inferiorly exactly opposite of the superior facet and also laterally so this is how the articulation occurs right exactly it fits right over here so this is your articulation at the facet of the thoracic joint or thoracic vertebra so then going ahead the superior one so the superior facet as you keep going down that is in the lower thoracic regions the superior facet it starts facing posteriorly and laterally so it is already facing posterior right it starts facing slightly laterally and the inferior one starts facing anteriorly it is already facing anteriorly and more medially so what you will get is a final lumbar vertebra because it is transitioning to lumbar vertebra right so if you see lumbar vertebra over here and look at its orientation it is oriented medially and laterally right the inferior facets right so that is what you are going to see in the thoracic region that the facets they'll start with the frontal plane orientation and then they'll start shifting to sagittal plane orientation so that the flexion extension movement is increased in the lumbar region so that is about the facets now going ahead we'll see what the spinous process has to offer so the spinous process has a slope which is inferior as you can see from t5 to t8 whereas from t11 to t12 it is triangular the spinous process will be triangular and horizontal it won't be going down it will be coming out horizontally okay apart from this there is also the vertebral foramen which is very small over here if you can see and it is more of a circular in cervical region it was more triangular right if you can remember the cervical over here it was triangular and bigger compared to thoracic which is not as big as the cervical and it is circular so that i have mentioned over here small and circle okay and then the last part is the disc now disc over here it's very thin which helps you in providing stability more thinner the disc more the stability is because movement will be less so there is reduced mobility and increased stability because of the thin disc it acts like a primary stabilizer it also is wedge shaped same like your body it has a wedge shape and this wedge shape again helps in increasing the kyphosis that is seen in the thoracic region apart from that i would i also like to mention the pedicles which are there posteriorly over here which are pretty thick lamina is also thick and broad in the thoracic region see the lamina and the pedicles okay and then the facets which are very thin and flat correct these are very flat and very thin so with that we finish off the thoracic spine structure or the thoracic spine vertebral body what did we see the body which produces kyphosis because of the wedge shape along with the thin disc right which is also wedge shape then we saw the facets which are oriented in frontal plane and because they are oriented in frontal plane the movement of lateral flexion will be more correct and then they start transitioning to sagittal plane slowly that is posterior laterally so posterior is facing backward and lateral so in the sagittal plane it will be oriented eventually okay and then we saw the transverse process how it articulates with the ribs that is a costo that is ribs and tubercular process right of the ribs how it articulates over there and then finally we saw spinous process which is inclined downward and then it has a small round foramen right so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my video please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like the video as it really helps me out also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video